I want to talk about being an ally. And right now, the people that need our alliance, our allyship, are the people that need an ally at this very moment are our black brothers and sisters. It's the same old civil rights struggle that we've had in this country for hundreds of years. But how can we be an ally? And in the future, hopefully, hopefully we've we've rebuilt the system at some point in the future when you're watching this and, and we're, we've moved on to the next thing we need to be the ally for. But in general, how do you be an ally? Well, first of all, if you're not in that group, if you're striving to be an ally, the first thing you can do to be an ally is to shut the fuck up and listen. Step one, super basic. Just shut the fuck up and listen. We often want to pretend we've already know everything about whatever struggle they may be having. And I've, I'm guilty of this a lot of times. You know, I do a lot of study I love to read, I love to learn, but right now, and at any point that we have to be an ally for somebody, step one is always shut up and listen. What are they saying? What is the grievance? You know, right now, we're dealing with a police system, with, with an overall system that just really treats minorities unfairly. And we have to shut up and listen and, and really understand how, how that system is treating them unfairly. We, we like to go, okay, well, we'll do this then. Well, it's not maybe necessarily what they need at that moment. Uh, we'll jump to, all right, we'll do this then. And maybe that's not what they need at that moment. Um, very dear friend of mine is on bed rest right now. Um, she has spinal bifida. And she's dealing with accessibility issues. Um, and that's something she's dealt with her whole life. Her school growing up didn't have a bus that was capable of getting her to school or, or, or to field trips. Um, and it's not like we've had uh, differently abled or disabled people, you know, just recently. We've, we've always had them among us. That's the earmark of, of civilization is the ability to take care of those who in certain ways can't physically take care of themselves. That is the earmark of civilization. We've had people with physical issues for millennia. Um, and I, I really have to stop and just listen to her and, and what is it that's affecting you? With our, our, you know, minority brothers and sisters, we have to listen to what is it that's affecting you. What can we do with people with depression? I can speak from this area. Sometimes you have to just shut up and listen. And sometimes we don't need necessarily a particular fix for something sometimes we just need to get something off our chest or just kind of explain like you can't fix this right now and I'm speaking from a depression standpoint I don't need a fix necessarily for what what I'm experiencing I need just to be understood 
I think really like the first step to fixing so many things is to just understand. That's so basic. So how to be an ally, step one, shut up and listen. And then if, if they have actionable steps or you can think of actionable steps, first of all, run it by them, you know? If, if a person in a wheelchair or in a walker or, or some other uh, mobility assistance device is telling you that a crosswalk in town isn't really functional, then you don't want to go put in a merry-go-round somewhere else and say that's going to fix it. You have to listen, well, what can we do to make this better? Well, this is too steep or that's this or that's that. You have to listen to what what they would think the solution might be and then work with them on that. In the case of, of um, systemic brutality against black people, um, listen, what is it they want? Maybe no more brutality. Well, what are steps we can take to get rid of that? Well, maybe, you know, stop and frisk is a bad idea. We've got to look at what, what are they saying that they think the solutions could be. And then we got to actually, here's three, do it. And frankly, I'm not sure which of those is the hardest step. For a lot of us, it's step one, just listening, just shutting up and listen. And then a lot of times we need to amplify their voices. You know, if, if you have someone who deals with depression on a daily basis and they write an article about what depression does to them, amplify that so maybe other people will hear it from their perspective, from our perspective. If, if a minority is telling, you know, writing this, this is what happens to me on a daily basis or a weekly basis, we amplify that and we go, look, this is what's happening. If a person with, uh, you know, motor impairment tells, writes an article about how hard it is to do the laundry, believe it or not, that's a thing. We need to amplify that so people can understand it. And, and it goes back, that first step is so key. We have to put the effort in to understand. It's so important. If you want to be an ally, if you really want to be an ally, you have to listen. You have to, and, and all the way through, we got to listen. You got to go, well, what is the step we can take? What do you think the step is we can take? And then we do it. And throughout, then you look at it and you go, did this work? If it's no, go back to step one got to work together if if someone's telling you if, if a member of the LGBT community is telling you that this is a common thing they experience you listen and then you figure out how to fix it if, if a member of a minority group is is telling you that this thing happens regularly you listen and you figure out how to fix it if a person with disabilities or impairments or uh, you know you listen and then you work to fix it with them you cannot be an ally without the person you're trying to be an ally to it's a hundred percent mutual effort if you're in a position to do something then it's up to you it's your duty it's your job to do it and that's how to be an ally listen that's the biggest part shut up listen I hope this is helpful I'm Chad Rushing